Ever feel like you're doing this teaching thing alone? You don't have to be. Share Teaching is all about sharing the workload through the power of collaboration and teamwork. Together, we'll walk through all the difficult parts of teaching and learn how to streamline our processes, fine tune our time management, and develop a more manageable workload. If that sounds like a dream come true to you, then welcome to the Shared Teaching Podcast. Let's share in the teaching to make those dreams a reality. Now here's today's Shared Teaching. Welcome back to the Shared Teaching Podcast. Today I have a very special guest with us, Dr. Lori Friesen, who is an expert with helping support new teachers, especially when it comes to classroom management. So welcome, Dr. Lori. Thank you so much, Susan. I'm so happy to be here. I am excited as well. So I heard you have some fantastic classroom management hacks. And so we're going to dive into that a little bit. So the first one I think is, I'm hearing a lot of this year, is keeping students' attention. So what can we do to really get them focused during our lessons? (laughs) Oh my gosh, if I had a penny for every time new teachers ask me this in particular, how do I get kids to like stay focused during lessons? Okay, so this hack is so simple. And when I started using it in my classroom, I was like, why did I not think of this sooner? Because that's what the thing with hacks, right? They're so simple. And then when you start using them, it's like, oh, gee, why didn't I think of this? So this one is called Magic Word. Do you know what this one is? Have you used it before? I'll I've tell you a little more. Than you- secret student. So maybe it's similar. Yeah, it's similar to that. Okay. <laughs> so basically, you choose a magic word and you write it on the board first thing in the morning and you announce it to the class. So it can be anything like superstar or unicorn or popcorn or magnificent, like a word that wouldn't typically be used in your classroom that day. So you can get kind of creative with it. And then when you're giving directions or you announce something important or even right in the middle of the lesson, right mid-sentence, anytime you want to check that your students are listening, you throw in the magic word. And the first student to raise their hand in the middle, like if you say right in the middle of the sentence and popcorn, and then you continue on with your sentence, the first person to raise their hand gets a dojo point or any kind of small reward you want to give. I had a teacher say she threw a Hershey's kiss every time that (laughs) they did it. Whatever works for you. Some teachers are not into rewards like that, but the first person to raise their hand gets some kind of reward. Maybe they get to line up for recess first. Kids absolutely love it. It's a great way to keep your kiddos paying attention during your lessons. And whenever you just need to know are they really paying attention? Because sometimes they get that glazed overlook, right? On their For faces. sure. <laughs> <laughs> I experienced that a lot today because we just came back from spring break. So. <laughs> yes. Oh, I bet. I can only imagine. <laughs> I like that though. I'm going to have to use that. that yeah. That's a good one. Going with that, I know a lot, a lot of students are really having a hard time with talking. Like the noise level is like the number one complaint I'm hearing from teachers right now. So what do you have to help with that? Well, this hack is really, when you said that, it was think, I was thinking more specifically about when you, for example, say a page number and your, te- your kids don't listen at all, right? We've all been there. You've just right. finished teaching a lesson. You've explained to students what they need to do for their assignment. You've re- reviewed all the instructions. You give your page number. You tell your students several times, but then the moment that they're supposed to be starting their work, you have a handful of students who ask you, what page are we supposed to be on, right? Right, every (laughs) time. (laughs) Yes. So here's the hack. And again, so simple. I got this from another teacher who taught down the hall for me. I'm like, oh, why didn't I think of this? So you don't just say the page number, but you write it in a designated space on the whiteboard, always the same space, with a marker that has a little bell attached to it. (laughs) So that way your students might not hear you actually say the page number because, right, we all have those students, a handful of students who never know where anything is at any time, but like details like that, they're never paying attention to. So when they don't know which page number they need to go to because they weren't paying attention, they know where on the whiteboard to find it. But that little auditory cue, that little bell is just an extra attention grabber for kids. So they know, oh, wait, she's writing a page number. (laughs) So such a little thing. And then the thing I did as that was related to that, that I went, oh, I could also have this because you know how you have one or two students in your class who always know way too much, like they're 
kind of in everybody else's business. (laughs) I added a director of directions job to my class job board. So that student was in charge of if someone else didn't know like the page number or anything else, like any kind of directions that I was giving the classroom, then my director of directions job was to tell them where they're supposed to, you know, what they were supposed to be doing or what page they were supposed to be on. And of course you need a backup for that. But if you have a couple of students doing that job, it really cuts down on the number of questions that you get. And especially when you start using that little bell, if you're using it consistently, then kids get in the habit of looking up, you know, every time they hear that bell. So that's a big one. That is a good one. I write the page number, but I've never thought of making it auditory. So I yeah. like that. That's a neat I mean, one. I used a bell, but I, I don't know if there are any other things you could do to attach to a pen. You might get creative with that. but <laughs> Right. I know the doorbells are a really big thing right now. Yes. I found yeah. it was too loud for my classroom because then like all the neighboring classrooms hear it. <laughs> yeah. And I think the doorbell is great for getting their attention in general. But when like, for example, page numbers were just a bad one, especially when I was teaching fourth grade and up like higher elementary, right. when I expected them to know the page number, it drove me crazy. So that was just a different sound. I even had a little cowbell in my classroom that I started using for that. I would ring the bell and they'd be like, oh, she's writing a page number down. It was different, right? right so like that's how I use dogs, it. right? I know, isn't it terrible? But we're, we're, we're also animals. I mean, it that works. is true, right? <laughs> for sure. Yeah. <laughs> So that I think goes along with how can we help increase their engagement and participation during lessons? Like, so we have the bell for when we're writing the page number and we have like a secret word we can just like pop in in the middle, but is there something else that goes with that? Well, I don't know if you've had this issue in your classroom. We probably all have, but you get some students who answer all the time, but then you have a lot of students who just kind of let them lead and they don't yes. really engage. They aren't really participating. So when you ask a question, like we'll just say, for example, three plus four, all of your students know they can possibly get called on. So of course you first call on three or four students that have their hands up and then you call on others, but here's the hack. You don't tell them if their answer is right or wrong when they answer. It's just more like a Mm -hmm. rapid fire kind of question and answer. So after the first few times of doing this at the beginning of the year or whenever you start it, your class knows that they can participate and they can answer questions even if their answer is wrong because you're not going to point out that their answer is wrong, right? You just smile as the answer and move on to the next student for their answer. So once you've called on six or seven students, then you can tell the class to tell their friends, good job, or, you know, congratulations for participating or high five or whatever it is, but you're rewarding their participation before you give the answer. So it can really help the engagement and the listening in your classroom. And I think in my classroom, at least my students were less afraid to answer questions because I wasn't going to point out that they got it wrong or they didn't have to take that risk. Right. Which is really true. You know, I actually kind of do that, especially during math oh, lessons, but I didn't I really it. connect it with like not wanting them to like feel bad for their answer. I was just trying to get like, okay, well, you're always the one that answers and I'm not yes. going to tell you right or wrong. I'm just going to call on a bunch of people. And then when I announce the answer, we go over it. Then they're like, yes, you know, they're all excited for themselves yeah. or it helps those struggling kids. They'll say someone else's answer right? (laughs) I let it go. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, cause you answered something. I don't care if it was his answer, you know? Yep. They can just copy and at least it gets them in the habit of participating and taking a little risk, even though they're, like you said, copying someone else, then maybe the next time they might be willing to say it before that student. It just, it's kind of cool that you're already doing it without even realizing. But I think as teachers, we instinctively do a Mm -hmm. lot of things without really realizing, Hey, that's actually really positively impacting my class. Right. Yeah. Because you're like, I just need to change something up. (laughs) Yeah. Right. And that Especially this time of the year, everybody's exhausted, right? (laughs) Right. For sure. Yeah. (laughs) We're crawling towards that finish line unless we're in another country, but... (laughs) Right. (laughs) It's true. I know. like Australia or something, I think. It's like just starting back to school or... Yeah. I I lived in Australia for a year and they actually were on summer break in December and January, which right. was so crazy. I mean, I remember having Christmas and them going, yay, it's summer break. And I'm like, this is so weird. <laughs> yeah. Cause I feel like they're just, yeah, getting into the swing of like being back and we're like, yep. okay, we're almost done. <laughs> I'm selling back to school resources in my TPT store right now. So I think that's happening. Cause when yes. that, that starts happening, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. That's 
probably happening in Australia. So. Right. So when you have students that are working independently or doing group work, what do you do to kind of get their attention quickly? Now, this one is an oldie but a goodie. I don't know if you use it, but as a new teacher, I didn't know about this and it would have changed my life if someone would have said, Lori, why don't you use... Of course, we all use attention getters. You know, we use a little... um, Oh, what's a good one? Macaroni and cheese, you know, or whatever you want to do. Some kind of attention getter. Yeah. Yes. But in my classroom, I love to use a countdown from five to zero noise. And I taught my students at the beginning of the year that when you hear me count down from five to zero noise... Once I get to zero, my hand is going to be in the air and so is yours and your eyes are going to be on me. And that was just a way for me to know, for them to know they weren't cutting, they weren't doing anything with their hands, they weren't drawing or distracted Mm -hmm. and their eyes were on me so that they could get their next direction. But I had a lot of fun with this. I mean, in upper elementary, I started with 10, especially, or in lower elementary, I started with 10, so they had a little more time. But also if they were really busy with a big project, I could speed it up or slow it down or raise or lower my voice, which was fun. And then you can just throw in fractions. So I'd be like, all right, ladies and gentlemen, in 10, in nine, in eight, and they're like scrambling in in seven, (laughs) in six, in five and a half, oh, five and a quarter, in five, and they're like, ah, freaking out. (laughs) So by the time you get to zero noise, you can really help them to be successful because you've given them so many chances along the way. And I just loved that one for helping kids to just feel like they're part of a community, you're getting their attention, but they have time to actually get back to doing what they, you know, to give their attention to you. Right. Sorry. And my parents actually used that one when I was little, because my dad was a really? big fan of like, and five and three quarters. Yeah. <laughs> right. It was like time to get to bed. Like you better hurry up before you get to yeah. that zero. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's so funny. So I do I like it in my classroom. That. It's effective. <laughs> yeah. It works really well. It's an oldie, but a goodie. And I, it was so funny because when I've said it for, to new teachers before, they're like, I'd never heard that before. So I was like, yeah, me neither. When you haven't had it in your own home, there's so mm-hmm. many little tricks like this that work magic in the classroom. Right. And a lot of things are coming back again, like 80s yep. clothing, <laughs> yeah, no hairstyles. <laughs> like. Oh, mullets. Don't get me started with the mullets. I have a 20-year-old right now who oh. wants, he's, he's into the, mel- the mullets. I'm like, would you please cut your hair? He looks like Billy Ray Cyrus. He doesn't know who that is, but I'm telling you. <laughs> like, it's a fade. <sighs> <laughs> oh, Hopefully just you. a face. He's so cute. He just needs to get a haircut. Okay, anyway. <laughs> That's kids for you. All right, so you mentioned cutting earlier. So um, yeah. as you're trying to get kids' attention, but cutting is like the biggest thing in my classroom. Like we just did a project <laughs> today and like little tiny pieces of paper everywhere. Yes. And it yes. does drive me crazy Um, drives the custodial staff crazy. So what kind of Mm -hmm. hack do we have for like helping the kids clean up that get all those little tiny pieces? This one changed my life in my classroom. And it's so simple again. That's why it's a hack, right? Right. You can try something called the one scrap club. You already know what this is when I say it. You teach your students how to cut around something like a poem or for a poetry journal or anything that can be cut around one time in one piece. And of course, that saves the floor and the tables from all those tiny little pieces that are always all over the floor. And it's interesting because some kids actually really have to think about the cutting path. It doesn't come naturally to a lot of your students. And as soon as they've cut what they need, if they've done it in one piece, they can say the words one scrap club, and then they put that one scrap in the recycling bin. And in my classroom, we actually started a hundred chart when I was teaching second grade. And when our class got to 101 scraps, then we got to go to the recycling center for a field trip, which was kind of a fun way to tie it in, right? (laughs) But they got to put a little check or color in that square for the 100 um, chart right by the recycling bin. And it was just a fun way to keep them engaged. And it saved so much time and so much mess in our classroom. So such a little incentive to keep them involved. Right. I like adding that, like just that little like shout out to themselves. Because yes. anytime you can do that with lower elementary, like they're all over it. Well, even yes. a little bit older kids too. Like I still think like fourth yep. graders are still, you know, there's big kids. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, anytime you can tie in a class reward of some kind for working together and making the classroom a great community, whatever it's going to be. I mean, ours was a field trip to the recycling bin because it was literally, or recycling center because it was literally across the street. <laughs> it was not a big field. 
field trip, but they got to go. But anything you can do that's creative and fun, it's tied to maybe environmental awareness or something like that if you're saving paper or you're recycling paper, is just right. a good thing in the classroom. So it's fun. I like that. You yeah. add that. I do do that. Like t- I teach them exactly how I want things cut. Cause yeah, those tiny little oh. scraps everywhere are just like too much. <laughs> Drives me crazy. <laughs> I'm like, it's going to look like this and you're just going to have this. And I'm dangling. Yeah. Above, like, <laughs> That's your only trash you should have. <laughs> what? <laughs> right. right? <Ding. laughs> no idea. <laughs> So another pet peeve that I have is when students hand in their work without their names, of course. And Mm -hmm. I feel like that's like universal. (laughs) I I just can't seem to remember to put their names on it. So what hack do we have for remembering names? Well, there's a lot of good ones out there. I've been seeing some good ones online right now lately on Instagram, but the one that I loved in my classroom and this Anytime you can turn something into a competition or a little reward again, it's really fun for kids. So I added a class job to my job board of name stamper. So basically the name stamper gets a special stamp and I like to use glitter stamp pads, just anything that's special, right? right? (laughs) And anytime you hand out any kind of paper or worksheet that students need to put their names on, your class knows that the the name stamper is going to be coming around in about 30 seconds. And if they have their name on their paper, they'll get a stamp on their hand or on their paper, whatever you want to do, whatever. And I like to switch it up every time. They don't know what kind of stamp they're going to get. They don't know what color it's going to be. It's like if it's seasonal stamps, but doesn't cost me anything. The right. moment the name stamper goes to the front of the class with that little stamp pad <laughs> and the stamp, the kids are like, oh, oh. <laughs> and of course, I mean, it doesn't mean anything, but they care. Like even in fourth and fifth grade, I was like, they care about this because it's just a game, right? Right. Anytime you can turn it into a game. So it really cut down. There were still always one or two that were completely unaware of what was going on. <laughs> of but course. Once, the kids are looking around at each other like, wait, what, what? They got their names on their paper. So that was the best thing that worked for me in my classroom. Such a simple thing again. Nice. Yeah. I have seen a lot of like the, you know, the little clothespin sign and stick your names there. But then like even just today I had a kid, I'm like, pretty sure it's your handwriting. I'm only missing like these three papers. It's definitely not these two. It's got to be you. He's like, no, that's not my paper. Uh, hey then, like, would you like to start it over? Because I know it's yours. <laughs> well, there, yours isn't in here. There isn't one with your name on it. So claim one, <laughs> right? So I'm sure just like dangling them up on like clothespins, which is a good idea to start with. But if you have a lot of kids like the ones I have this year, they'd be like, no, not mine. No, nope. no, nope. <laughs> no idea. Okay, everyone starts over then. <laughs> pile, right? Just then, just an empty pile of, yeah. <laughs> Oh, but I like I that. I love those them. Games. It reminds me of my friend. Um, she only taught for a couple of years. She's like, I'm out. <laughs> but she did kindergarten and she did what she called smellies, which were oh. literally just a flavored lip balm. And she'd go around and like rub it on their hand and they would get a smelly for like doing something good. And they That's loved so creative. it. Isn't that yeah. cute? Yeah. So, so fun. You can kind of smell it and then. <laughs> yep. And probably lick it if I know kinder- five-year-olds. That's what scares I'm, me. <laughs> right. I'm sure that there was probably some licking involved too. Yeah. <laughs> if they eat glue, they're going to lick their hands with that. <laughs> right. I mean, those listening, I don't know that I would try that with like all this COVID and, you know, germs, but it was, it was a cute idea back in the day. It is cute. So I think we had seven hacks. So I think we're on to number seven now. So do you have anything to help them walk quietly in the halls? Oh, yes. Okay. (laughs) I love, I love any strategies that are simple that are going to get me like the results that I need. And I was so embarrassed. I don't know if you're like me, but when I first started teaching, I was so embarrassed because every time I took my class out in the hallway, my class was literally the most, I'm doing air quotes, but most spirited. Okay. (laughs) In the entire school. I'm like, I don't know. I just got the spirited (laughs) class. Like, I don't know. Like literally, I had no idea what I was doing. That, but that's beside the point. I was right. like, I just don't understand. So when I found this hack, I'm like, oh, game changer. It was such a life changer for my day to day. So basically all you do is when students are lined up and ready to leave the classroom, you say the words game on. Now you can use girls versus boys. I know that that's becoming a little bit more taboo right now because of gender neutral, right. or you can do team one and team two, or you can do teacher 
versus students. And whenever someone talks, the other team gets a point in the hall. So all you do is keep a running total on a mini whiteboard, take it with you when you leave the classroom. It's just a simple tally. And at the end of the day or the end of the week, the team with the most points gets some kind of a prize or gets to line up first for home or gets a homework pass or gets something cool that the other team doesn't get. So simple, but it just right. works so well. That is really simple. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because that's very similar to the teacher versus teacher, um, teacher versus students that I think is in, is it whole brain teaching where you have yep. the scorecard? Yeah. 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 I, I always seem to like, yes, we're doing this today. And then like, <laughs> I don't know now about it today. I'm like, oh, I forgot to give anyone points. <laughs> I know that's the hard part. I had actually, you're going to laugh. I had a reward monitor in my classroom as a class job and their job was to literally remind me to do all the things that I said I was going to do because they know right? they are paying attention more than we are. We have so many things on our minds, but Mm -hmm. they were like happy to remind me, did we get a point or did we get this or did we... (laughs) Right. There's so, always that one in the class, kind of like what you were talking about earlier with the kid that wants yep. to like check everybody. <laughs> exactly. Always in charge of everybody else. And then they forget to do their own work. So that's always right. the second right. part. Right. <laughs> oh, dear. I love it. Like I learned some good things today. Like I'm going to have to definitely try them out tomorrow. Yeah. You know, what's so funny is a lot of these I picked up just visiting other classrooms or talking to teachers in the staff room and going, do you do, what do you do for this? Or what do you do for that? And it's so helpful because we've all been there. We're all in the same situation. And sometimes one small idea, if you just pick up one idea that's new, it's been bothering you, whatever it is in your classroom for so long, it's literally a game changer when you walk in the next day and you're like, I know what to do for this. It feels so empowering. So I love sharing hacks. <laughs> and we, we definitely need all the ones we can get this year. <laughs> yeah, it's been a challenge. It definitely yeah. has for sure. So I just wanted to mention, like I went to your website, which beautiful and amazing, by the way, but you Thank have the you. best quote on there. So you were talking about your heart-centered resources mm-hmm. and you said that we should allow our classrooms to become the soft place to fall on in mm-hmm. an often hard world. And I just, that resonated so much with me, especially right now. And then from last year, like being a virtual teacher, seeing how kids are in their home environments. Yes. Really. I mean, you hear about it, but to actually see it with your own eyes, like what's going on as they're trying to do their schoolwork. And -hmm. then to hear that on your, I'm giving myself goosebumps, but just to read that on your website, I was like, oh, that, that was like the best. The best yeah. thing. Like, I love that idea. So and reminding so much of the soft Sorry. place. No. That was, that's, yeah. yeah. And that's such a good takeaway. We have so much um, p- possibility and so much really, what's the word I'm searching for? There's just so much potential in what we can do in our classrooms. And I think that we can get caught up in all of the stuff we have to do and all of the things that are required by our district and by our school. And But when we close that door and we really focus on those babies in front of us, I don't care what age you're teaching, my boys right. are 20, 22, 24, they're my babies. And you look in their eyes and you realize how much they've struggled. I mean, teachers have too, but how much these little ones have struggled over the last few years. It just warms my heart to know that there are people like you in classrooms right now who are loving them up and giving them that space and that permission to have a soft place to fall. So Mm -hmm. thank you for everything that you're doing for your kids. Absolutely. And thank you for, you know, all the support and work you're doing with the new teachers coming in and hopefully even just take a little bit of that because the idea of just little things that can turn your classroom into like almost like a game and fun and rewarding and a place that they want to come every day. Yes. Is just, that's, I think that's just the goal. And it's, it does start with the smallest of things. Yeah, it really does. I agree. So I heard you have some fantastic stuff coming up soon. Did you want to go ahead and talk about that for our listeners? (laughs) I'm so excited to share this with you. 
So um, I have a free live masterclass coming up on May 17th, May 19th, and May 23rd. And it's called Four Secrets to Success in Your First Years of Teaching. And I'm giving you a step-by-step summer plan so you can be truly ready for the school year. So if you're a student teacher right now, you're just getting ready to graduate, or I guess, yeah, you're almost graduated, and you're thinking about setting up your first classroom, and you're kind of freaked out and overwhelmed, this is going to be so helpful for you. Or if you've taught a year or two, I have a lot of teachers who've been through the first year or two, especially during COVID. And if you haven't had a chance, like Susan mentioned, to be in the classroom with kids a lot, this will give you more of a foundation to understand what they need in those first few weeks of school and what you need to do to be prepared to support them throughout the year. I mean, it's, it's all the stuff, you know, Susan, that we do in the summer to prepare for the year that sets us up for success or we drown. So right. this is the masterclass where I can give you that plan. It's a step-by-step plan. And here's the fun part. Well, I mean, that's awesome. But <laughs> right. when you, re- when you register to be part, what's that? But there's more. <laughs> yeah, but there's more. I feel like we're on an infomercial. <laughs> but when you register to be part of the masterclass, you will get an exclusive invitation to join my pop-up Facebook group. Susan, you're welcome to join as well. Okay. Where we're going to have fantastic daily contests for some of my favorite back to school books, resources for your classroom, and you can participate in my scavenger hunt to win a free MacBook Air computer for your classroom. Hi. I'm so excited. <laughs> I just, that would have That's made a such one. a difference for me as a new teacher. So I'm like so excited. I get to give away one. My dream is to be able to be like Oprah and give away one for everybody, but right, at some point in my life, one. maybe. <laughs> So teachers can register at my website. It's drlauriefriesen.com forward slash masterclass. Um, I'll spell that for you because it's really hard. If you're driving, please pull over. <laughs> Don't. And I'll it's make deep. sure that it's also in the podcast notes too. Oh, good. In the show so notes. Look it yeah. up. Yes. <laughs> so it's D-R-L-O-R-I-F-R-I-E-S-E-N.com forward slash masterclass. That's it. Nice. So they pick one of those dates or does it go for all of those dates? Yeah, they'll choose one of those dates. We're opening the exclusive Facebook group, the pop-up group on May 9th. So if they've registered for the masterclass anytime before May 9th, then they'll get in the moment we open the doors on May 9th and we'll have a party for about a week before the masterclass and so much extra support and fun. So like I said, you're welcome to join. (laughs) Yes, I I will for sure because I... I just love hearing like new teachers have the best ideas. Yes. Right? They're like so inspiring. I haven't heard of. Yeah. Like not jaded. Enthusiasm. <laughs> yep. Which we all could use, right? Around. That young, youthful energy. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> so fun. Yeah. But awesome. Yeah. What a great opportunity. Because just having that support, even if you're not in the same city or state, um, yes. even country, I don't know how well you're opening it up to. But yeah. <laughs> Well, it's interesting because we always feel so alone, especially as new teachers. Well, as sure. all teachers, I think we try to do everything by ourselves and we don't right. need to, but we get in these little egg cartons and try to do everything on our own. Mm-hmm. And that's what I love about these kinds of opportunities is we can come together and really share ideas and really help each other and support each other and and really give each other the best of what we have to offer, which is what I think it's all about. Right. Amazing. So I'm so happy you were here today and that you were our guest. And so we went over seven fantastic classroom management hacks. And I don't think I have a favorite. I really liked all of them. Maybe the (laughs) bell on the marker was one of my favorites. Yeah. Just a dab of hot glue and that baby will be there. (laughs) Right? And then just that attention getter. I I I love it for both those reasons. <laughs> so yeah. simple and so easy to do. Yes. Easy to implement, which are my favorite hacks of all time. And you don't have to pay anything. I mean, that's the other thing. You don't, these don't cost anything. Like they're just ideas and you can implement them right away without any effort. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully our listeners enjoyed that. And then for sure, um, they should sign up for your masterclass. Masterclass. I was saying yeah. management in my head. I was like, that's not quite right. <laughs> For you sound sure. like me now. I can't find right. the right word. <laughs> Every day. It's been a long work day. Yeah. But for sure, they'll sign up for your master class. I'll have it all in the show notes for them. And thank you so much. I really appreciate this. And hopefully we can do it again soon and yes. give some thank more you. value. Thank you so much for having me. I really had fun. You're welcome. If you've loved this show, then join me in sharing the teaching. Hitting that six. 
subscribe button. And leaving us a review on iTunes. So we can be found by more teachers like you who are ready to start sharing the workload. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Find new episodes each week on shareteaching.com. Thanks for listening to the Share Teaching Podcast. Now it's working. Okay. Oh, okay. Let me just check this out.